Hello everyone, this is Chris, uh, also known as the author of C. Elman Mead, and this is my sci-fi novel of the year award-winning book from last year, The Demagogue Wars. I'm trying something new today. If you guys like this content and want to see more content like this, I ask that you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and tell your friends about it who might be interested in political thrillers such as this novel, where we'll get into how the American Second Civil War helps kick off World War III. So what I'm going to do today is I've got some content prepared for you guys. I'm going to read the prologue of my book, a four-page prologue that jumpstarts things for us in the year 2108. That's right. I fast-forwarded a good bit uh, from our current present day, and things are definitely wildly different. So here we go. The Demagogue Wars. Prologue. December 6th, 2108. 7 to 6 a.m. Eastern Time over downtown Jacksonville, Florida, USA. What a job, Bold City News 7 traffic chopper and local events journalist Jonas Chop Botchler thought to himself while looking down at his hometown bathed in beautiful, warm sunshine. This, while most of the country was already unseasonably cold, if not already blanketed with fresh snow. Today was, just, was not just any other Thursday because he was finally getting the day off tomorrow to fly out to San Jose for his first son's wedding. Jonas and his wife, Marissa, were so happy for their son and his bride-to-be. Adding a plate at the Thanksgiving dinner table next year for Sarah means that Marissa, or at least in her mind, got to claim daughter number four. Hey, Chop, alerted the pilot Donald Hampton, himself a former Army aviator. Looks like multiple northbound lanes are backed up just north of the river. I wonder if those two smoke plumes out by the beach have anything to do with it, Chop pondered. Want to check it out? Donald nodded in the affirmative and followed I-10 briefly before banking the chopper slightly to the left to head more toward the northern beaches. He had every intention of keeping downtown traffic in his line of sight so Chop could still make his 710 traffic report right before Jenny's weather update. Every intention, that is, until three very large, luminous balls of fire joined the two columns of smoke on the distant horizon. Chop, can you hear us, Chop? Came a call over the Bold City News 7 Chopper's intercom and sat relay system. I'm here, Nat. Has anyone reported a fire? Correction. Jonas Blotcher swallowed hard. Fires. We can see multiple fires out toward the north of Jack's Beach. Maybe even north of Atlantic Beach or... Before he could even say the words Naval Station Mayport, it hit him. He was about to report on a Pearl Harbor or 9-11 style attack. Here, in his beloved Jacksonville. Chop, we have been asked to keep our traffic helicopter away from Naval Station Mayport at this time. Eyewitnesses on the ground at Mayport are reporting that several warships, base structures, and the airstrip have been hit by cruise missiles from the west, co-anchor Natalie Briggs reported. Can you confirm your, from your position? And again, stay where you are as the FAA is closing the airspace around Mayport as we speak. Chop looked down and sure enough, he could see the white puffy contrails of missiles streaking over Mill Cove, then passing by Great Marsh Island before terminating in the vicinity of Mayport. Jonas was stunned to the point of being speechless while his pilot was practically foaming at the mouth with anger and wishing this two-seater had a couple of hellfire missile racks on either side. Finally able to muster up some words for his loyal audience, Chop the Traffic Guy said, Nat, this is unbelievable. Of all the days, Jonas thought to himself, hands shaking uncontrollably. Jonas, this is Malika. Vidview is being flooded with numerous videos of a Democratic Socialist Republic of Monrovia flag container ship from Western Africa being utilized to launch what a spokesperson from the Pentagon is saying are... Chinese YJ-18Q cruise missiles. Apparently these missiles can be remotely launched from prior... Oh, wait a second. We have breaking news. Audibly gasping and pulling her left hand away from her earpiece to join her right hand covering her mouth, she goes on to say, We now have reports of warplanes heading for NASDAQ. Our city is under attack. Natalie said this with tears now understandably rolling freely off her grief-stricken face. All of the Bold City News 7 viewers were aware of Nat's husband, the former Blue Angels pilot and current base commander of Naval Air Station Jacksonville, being her connection to this area. I've got them, Jonas confirmed with his trusted friend and pilot. We are headed to Nat Jacks now, and, I won't, and what I can tell is there are line upon line of what looks to be either transport craft, possibly carrying paratroopers or bombers. I can't really tell. Jonas is struggling to give an accurate report in case anyone from the Air National Guard, NORAD, or the Pentagon has picked up their live feed. Oh my God. No. God, please. Those are bombs. I can confirm that bombers are attacking NASJAX in real time. 
Chop, this is Malika again. Mike is asking that y'all land ASAP anywhere. Heck, pick a rooftop if you must. Just land safely so we know you two are going to be okay. The Air National Guard has NORAD alert fighter jets from our very own Florida Thunder Air Guard unit inbound with additional fighters from Tyndall Air Force Base and another Air Guard unit, the Swamp Fox of South Carolina, set to arrive any minute now. Donald and Jonas had already made eye contact with three formations of banking Chinese J-58 stealth fighter jets headed straight toward them as they made their pre-choreographed turns to presumably make another pass at NASJAX. When Donald pointed at his watch and then made a throat slashing gesture, Jonas knew that meant the jets in their flight path would not be interrupted in time before hitting NASJAX a second time. That could not go unchallenged. Malika, Natalie, I'm so, so sorry for today, Jonas said into the microphone of his headset. Chop, no, listen to me. Y'all need to land, Malika gently pleaded as best she could. Please tell Jenny that I love her dearly. I love her so, so much, Jonas said as clear as he could through a teary on-air goodbye. To my beautiful and delightful rose petals, the nickname Jonas has for his three younger daughters. Caitlin, Kylie, Candace, be good girls and listen to your mother for Papa. You three are the light of my eye and I love you. And son, God, this is so unfair. Thomas, I'm sorry about missing your wedding and not keeping my promise to you for that. Uh, to have that father and son talk at sunset, I promised you on the night before your big day. I'll say this and then go. Now Jonas, the man everyone in the Jacksonville viewing area knew as the traffic guy, spoke directly into the camera as Jonas Botchler, the father of San Jose investigative reporter Thomas Botchler. Love your wife Marissa with all your heart. And have lots of kids. I mean lots. Your mom will like that, Jonas grinned. I love all of you guys. Then the screen suddenly went black. Simultaneously, as Donald Hampton and Jonas Chop Boschler paid the ultimate sacrifice by downing a single supersonic Chinese warplane by flying directly into the oncoming formation of jets. Tonight, the nation will mourn with the people of Jacksonville, Florida. Would this be the penultimate event to finally unite America? And that is the end of the prologue. And we kick off uh, chapter one with a very bizarre inauguration into a future of what used to be called the United States of America. So more to come on that. Again, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up, hit the bell for notifications. So you, if you're, uh, once you subscribe to the channel, hope to bring more content like this for you guys and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. All right, thank you very much.